Let's look at the effect of concentration on cell EMF. Remember that delta G equals delta G0 plus RT, the natural logarithm of the quotient Q. Remember that delta G equals minus NFE, delta G0 equals minus NFE0. We can make the substitutions and solve for E. It's called the Nernst equation, E equals E0 minus RT over NF log of Q. At 298, this reduces down to E equals E0 minus 0 0.257 times the volts divided by N times the log of Q. Will the following reaction occur spontaneously at 25 degrees if the concentration of Fe2 plus is 0 0.60 molar and the concentration of cadmium 2 plus is 0 0.010 molar? Given the reaction, Fe2 plus plus cadmium in equilibrium with Fe and Cd plus. The oxidation is cadmium, cadmium 2 plus plus 2 electrons. The reduction is 2 electrons plus Fe2 plus, yielding 2 Fe. Again, a 2 electron change. E0 equals E0 oxidation plus the reduction. That's an E0 of plus 0 0.40 minus 0.44, or E0 is a negative 0.04 volts. Substituting into the Nernst equation, negative 0.04 volts minus 0.257 volts divided by 2 times the log, the product 0 0.010 over the reactant 0 0.60 gives an E0 of 0.13 volts it's spontaneous because E0 is positive. Concentration cells. Galvanic cell from two half cell reactions composed of the same material but different ion concentrations. Here we have zinc in contact with zinc 2 plus ion 10th molar and the other side zinc 2 plus this time at 1 molar in contact with zinc. The oxidation is zinc to zinc 2 plus plus 2 electrons. The reduction is zinc 2 plus plus 2 electrons yields zinc. The overall reaction is simply the difference in the concentrations of the zinc 2 plus ions. E equals E0 minus 0 0.257 volts over 2 times the log of zinc 2 plus dilute over zinc 2 plus concentrated. Of course, the E0 is going to be 0. Substituting in the numbers, you see that the E is a positive 0 0.0296. So this is a spontaneous reaction. Let's take a look at some batteries. Here's the common dry cell battery, also called the Lagrange cell. Notice that it has a piece of graphite for a cathode and the zinc anode, which is actually the shell of the battery. The electrolyte is a moist paste of zinc chloride and ammonium chloride. The anode shows the oxidation of zinc to zinc 2 plus. The cathode is the reduction of the manganese oxide. This is the overall reaction. Another common battery is the mercury battery. Here we have a anode of the zinc can. The cathode is the little nipple in the middle, the steel. The electrolyte is a solution containing potassium hydroxide and a paste of zinc hydroxide and mercury oxide. The anode is the zinc being oxidized. The cathode is the mercuric oxide being reduced to mercury. And this is the overall reaction. Since this battery generates liquid mercury when it's used up, it's a good reason not to dispose of it improperly. Here's the common lead storage battery found in most automobiles. Notice that the electrolyte is sulfuric acid and the plates are made up of lead or lead oxide. The anode is the lead being oxidized to lead sulfate and the reduction is the lead oxide being reduced to lead sulfate. This battery is reversible. This is the overall reaction. 
Corrosion is a term usually applied to the deterioration of metal by an electrochemical process. It's a multi-billion dollar problem worldwide. So the idea is that we have materials that are rusting away. Here is a iron nail. The, at the anode, the iron becomes iron 2 plus and the iron 2 plus becomes iron 3 plus. So it is being oxidized to the oxide, which is rust. The cathode, we have the oxygen being reduced. We can protect iron by having a sacrificial anode. In this case, we show a magnesium anode where the magnesium is being oxidized to magnesium 2 plus and allows the reduction of oxygen without interfering with the iron. So the iron storage tank is protected by the magnesium electrode. Electrolysis is a spontaneous process in which electrical energy is used to cause a non-spontaneous chemical reaction to occur. Commercially, that's how molten sodium chloride is separated into sodium metal and chlorine gas. You need a lot of electricity, a lot of direct current to do that. Here we see the electrolysis of water. Again, a battery is used to do the oxidation of water into oxygen and the reduction of the H plus into hydrogen. So the water is separated into hydrogen and oxygen by the use of an external current. Faraday's laws govern electrolysis. Look at these examples. Iron, excuse me, silver plus picks up an electron to become silver metal. It's a reduction. It takes one mole of electrons to make one mole of silver. In the case of aluminum 3 plus, it takes three electrons to make aluminum. So it's three moles of electrons to make one mole of aluminum. A mole of electrons is also 96,500 coulombs. One can calculate the number of coulombs, that is the charge, by taking I, the number of amps, and multiply it by the time. The time has to be in seconds. How much calcium will be produced in an electrolytic cell of molten calcium chloride if a current of 0.542 amperes is passed through the cell for one and a half hours? At the anode, we're going to get chloride reduced to chlorine. At the cathode, we're going to get the reduction of calcium 2 plus to calcium. This is the overall reaction. Two moles of electrons equals one mole of calcium. The moles of calcium is 0.542 coulombs per second times one and a half hours times 3600 seconds per hour times one mole of electrons over 96,500 coulombs times one mole of calcium over two moles of electrons. This will generate 0.0126 moles of calcium or 0.50 grams of calcium.